Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the brand spanking new OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. And OnePlus challenged me to go to Iceland for the most epic unboxing ever, and to put the Nord CE2 5G through its paces with three incredible challenges to find out if this really is the new mid-range killer. So the Nord is all about OnePlus going back to their roots, their goal of sharing the best technology with the world, and the CE or Core Edition goes a step further, packing some impressive tech into a cheap package, but we'll come back to that. All I can say right off the bat though, is that this is more affordable, more accessible, and gives you a little more than you expect for the price. So a big thank you to OnePlus for partnering with me on this epic video. And also make sure you stay to the end as I'll be telling you how you can win one of these. There will be a giveaway. But first, let's see if this phone can live up to its name. I'm gonna need this. Come with me. Welcome to the Nord Pole. It's actually Iceland. But it's a lot more fun to say Nord Pole. And I'm here in this epic, beautiful country with this epic phone. I've got the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. It is very cold right now, and I want to get this unboxed. But really, we've come to our true north just to see what this can do. This is definitely the most extreme unboxing, extremely cold unboxing, the things I do for you guys, I think I've ever done. But I think the phone's going to be worth it. I've never done an unboxing in front of a boiling geezer before, but here we are. In the box, just quickly, Famous OnePlus cable. You can even join the Red Cable Club now. Uh, and actually, really importantly, this guy, the new SuperVOOC charger. This is actually a really big deal. We'll talk about charging later on, but this thing charges ridiculously fast. But now, for the best bit, actually unwrapping this guy. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that, the way the light hits it. So this is the Bahama Blue. There is also a mirror gray, if you want, a little bit more understated. And you can definitely see the sort of design inspiration coming from the flagship OnePlus phones. Definitely feels more premium than the price. And actually that is by far the most exciting part of this phone. It starts from 349 euros or in the UK, 299 quid, less than 300 quid for that. And bear that in mind as we talk about the specs and we put it through its paces for today. You also notice on the bottom here, three and a half mil headphone jack. You don't see that nearly enough anymore. And actually on these more affordable phones, I know a lot of people want it, especially the OnePlus community. We've also got stereo speakers, Dolby Atmos tuned. Uh, it is a 6.43 inch display, so really nice, comfortable size. And on the back, main lens, ultra wide, and then a selfie, a 16 megapixel selfie on the front. As I wipe away the raindrops, you can see this is super thin. It's just 7.8 mil thick. Actually, that's the slimmest phone since the OnePlus 6T. Also nice and lightweight. And actually, while well, I don't want to pop out the tray right here, we do have dual SIM, 5G of course, and it supports micro SD cards, so you can expand the storage. So for under 300 quid, this thing's packed with features. You really are getting a little more than you'd expect. I'll tell you what I really do appreciate about OnePlus though, is they do actually listen. If you go into uh, the settings on the phone, you'll see credits to people, you know, everyday users who suggest things and then they implement changes. The headphone jack, the expandable storage, stereo speakers, all those nice things. Uh, but then also obviously with Oxygen OS, for me, that's one of the big reasons to buy a OnePlus bloatware free, no horrible pre-installed apps, really, really fast. Since we are in Iceland, we should probably put it to the test as well, not just unbox it. Let's take some photos and test this camera out. So I'm sure you're the same as me. One of the most important features on any phone is the camera. So with this, we have a 64 megapixel main lens, eight megapixel ultra wide, no telephoto on this one, but you can see we get this beautiful landscape with the ultra wide, 0.6 times zoom. So some pretty good specs considering the price. And actually it goes a little bit further because we have this AI enhanced camera. So this uses a MediaTek Dimensity 900 chip. Part of that is something called the Dora AI architecture, Dora the Explorer, maybe even. And what that can do is use things like the accelerometer and just basically enhance the camera a bit beyond what you might expect for this hardware. So we've got dedicated night modes for low light, obviously. Now, if we switch over to video, this can shoot in up to 4K30 with the rear camera, but we do also get some AI smarts as well. So if you tap this little button, we get AI highlight video. Now, particularly in low light or at nighttime, this actually comes in really handy uh, to improve the lighting, to stabilize the white balance so it doesn't flicker as much. Really, really nice, although it does limit it to 1080p. We've also got 
this uh, ultra study mode. Again, TTP, much better if you're walking around or walking off a geezer in Iceland or something or a mountain. Really quite a nice setup and lots of options. And then finally, of course, on the front, say hi, everyone. <laughs> 16 megapixel selfie. And I do quite like this little uh, notification LED there. So everyone knows where to look. I hate when you get phones and you just can't see where the selfie camera is. So overall, a nice little setup. What do you reckon? The geezer was intense, but we've now driven up to a glacier. <laughs> what am I doing here? Snowmobiles. Should we go on one of those? <laughs> this is insane. But I want to talk about what's powering this thing because inside we have the MediaTek Dense C900 chip which is <laughs> not only faster than last year, the original CE, but also more power efficient. That's paired with eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, plus micro SD, of course. But that's only part of the story, because we've got that 90 hertz refresh rate screen as well. And that's a full HD plus AMOLED 90 hertz. And then, of course, on top of that, you've got Oxygen OS. So no bloatware, really lightweight, and even on the back of a snowmobile, I can just about <laughs> see what I'm doing here, but it's just like, it's so fast. <laughs> How has it come to this? Good job. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm exhausted. Whew, what a day, I've never done snowmobiling before, I've never seen a geyser before. That was incredible. I've actually never been to Iceland either. And if you haven't, I definitely recommend it. Absolutely beautiful country. And also some local delicacies uh, are here in front of me with some, uh, well, I've been told this is a kind of sheep's head pate. I think it's called uh, Svita Salta. That's actually quite nice. Uh, but back to the foam, that's why we're here. We are looking at 60% battery life left and I've been abusing this pretty hard today. And actually, really interestingly, it's got a dual cell design, 4,500 million powers. And so with this SuperVoog charger, 65 watts, it actually means we can top this up for a day's use in 15 minutes or to 100% in half an hour, which is not something you see very often in a phone in this price range. It's a really unique phone and you just don't get these kind of features at this price point very often. So I've got a few more thoughts. It's been a long day, so come back with me to the studio. Okay, we're back. Now, when my friends and family ask me what phone should they buy, very rarely are they looking for a recommendation of a phone that costs over a grand, you know, like one of these proper flagships that are just so ridiculously expensive. So I'm always looking for the best mid-range phone. And so when OnePlus asked if I wanted to go on this epic uh, unboxing adventure with them in Iceland for the Nord CE2, well, I jumped at the chance. Normally I unbox and test phones here in the studio with, you know, heating. I've never done it by an exploding geezer before, which was actually an incredible sight and also very, very cold. And then the second challenge of actually using this and seeing how fast it was while on the back of a snowmobile in a complete whiteout blizzard by a glacier. I was told the glacier was there, but I couldn't see anything. I think we drove three hours to what seemed like the middle of nowhere and I couldn't see anything. It was a very surreal experience. But you know what, this was the hero. It survived everything we threw at it and it performed really well actually. And then for the third challenge, back at the hotel where we had some Icelandic delicacies, I think maybe I was the hero for that one, but we saw the super fast charging and the fact that it still had a good amount of battery left after the end of a really long day in freezing conditions. It really did stand up to the challenge. Of course, when you are making a phone at this price point, there are certain choices you have to make. For example, we don't get an official IP rating, although it can withstand places and cope with light drizzles, and clearly it survived the onslaught of my Icelandic adventure. In fact, OnePlus told me that all their devices go through durability and water resistance tests, so the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G can withstand splashes and easily cope with sweat, moisture, and light drizzles with no damage. Also, in my experience, video stabilization when recording at 4K is 
all right, it's fine, but really I would suggest uh, filming at 1080p most of the time. It's a lot smoother with that EIS. We also don't get wireless charging, and some competitors do offer 120Hz versus the 90 we get on here, and it's a small point, but the slightly thicker chin at the bottom means the bezel is a little bit asymmetrical. But that's about all the negatives I can find with this. But what I would say is while this does have strong competition, what keeps me coming back to OnePlus is that lightweight, bloat-free software, Oxygen OS. It just makes such a difference to how nice this feels to use. And in your daily life, the experience of using the phone is what you'll notice. And so together with the new chip, the solid camera and impressive charging, the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G really does give you a little more than you'd expect. So is this the new mid-range killer? Well, quite possibly. I need to do more tests and proper camera comparisons and benchmarks and things, but first impressions are very good. And like those Top Gear or Grand Tour specials where they become really attached to the cars they've been driving through the challenges, I've become pretty attached to this as well. Now at the start, I did mention a giveaway. And all you have to do is head on over to OnePlus UK's Instagram account. Make sure you follow them and you'll see a post on how to win. I'll also link to it in the description below this video. And I'll also leave a link to where you can buy this, where you'll also get a little bit something special with it. But I can't tell you what it is just yet. It was so much fun to make this video. I hope you enjoyed it as well. But more importantly, if you do have any questions about the Nord CE2 5G, do leave a comment below and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next upload. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.